Hi everyone, Nico Anna here. Today we're gonna to talk about how narcissists use pain as a weapon against you. And not only do they use their own pain that they will project onto you, but they also can use your pain, your anticipated future pain that they have intimate knowledge of um, also as a weapon against you. Before we jump into this content, I just want to tell you all, I'm so pleased to offer a community now that you can join. It's called the HeartShine EFT community. If you're interested in joining an incredible movement of people who are learning to reclaim their true potential after narcissistic abuse. So if you want to just go ahead and look in the description below this video, click the link to find out more about that. So let's talk about this pain. Most of you know that narcissists will project their own pain onto others as a way to dump it onto other people that they're around so they don't have to deal with it. Because of their lack of self-awareness and their inability to process whatever trauma they experienced as a child, they are actually literally taking that pain and pushing it out into their external world. And they will project this pain onto others. And if we grew up with narcissists, or maybe we just in a pattern where this is something that we're susceptible to in adulthood, we will take that pain on as our own and we'll take responsibility for it and therefore become an enabler to the narcissist. So not only will we be, will we be carrying pain that's not ours, um, we'll also be in codependency with a narcissist and this is not what we want right <laughs> but we don't do this on purpose so obviously we're not aware that we're doing this it's it's especially something that you know the trauma bond uh creates a blind spot for so again if you were raised um with any kind of narcissist in your family at all no matter who they were um if, especially if they were a caregiver you're going to be very blind to this possibility that you are carrying a lot of their pain because when you were a child you know, they projected that pain onto you and you had no real cognitive abilities or a way to frame the experience in order to process it properly. And so that you just um, absorbed it, you took it on, um, you created behaviors to make yourself feel safe. So let's just say, you know, you, you're a child and you've got a parent that's projecting pain onto you that's telling you, you know, it's your fault that I, that this didn't work out for me, or look what you've done, you ruined my life, and that's just kind of some extreme examples, but just to make it really clear for the example, and then, you know, you take that on as a child, and then you say, wow, I, I, I caused my parent this much pain, I must be a bad person, you know, I must, I must be terrible, there must be something wrong with me, and so first of all, you're developing a, what we call a core belief, in clinical EFT, it's called the core belief, I'm a bad person. And not only will that follow you for the rest of your life and lay in your subconscious and lay out patterns of experiences for the rest of your life that reflect I'm a bad person, you will also create behaviors to try to compensate for this. So you will think, well, if I can just do something, you know, to take this pain away from this parent, maybe then I'll be safe. Because that's what we're trying to do as child children. We're just trying to create safety and security in our environment. And if we depend on this narcissistic parent for that, then we're going to have coping mechanisms to try and get what we need because we're not getting what we need. We're not being supported. Um, we're not being protected from our parents' shame and pain and guilt and things that they haven't resolved because they're not self-aware. So that's what happens. They project the pain onto us. We take it on. We create all kinds of negative harmful core beliefs we carry for the rest of our lives and there we are <laughs> so and i'm going to talk about how we can release those in a second so there is good news okay hang in there another way that narcissists will use your own pain as a weapon against you is in an attempt usually to create a, a sense of guilt or shame on your part um, anytime maybe you were trying to set a boundary with them and they want to cross that boundary and they might employ a tactic of, you know, possibly indicating that in the future, you're going to feel some kind of pain because of this. You know, if you don't do what I say, or if you don't, you know, uh, respond to my request, or if, if you don't allow me to manipulate and control you, then this will be the consequence. So they may suggest something like, you know, that 
something terrible could happen to them and then you're going to feel bad, right? They're going to, to create a future possible scenario in which you would, you would feel that. So they're taking your pain. It's almost like abuse by proxy. If you've heard of that before, they're taking your possible future pain and using it as a way to abuse you by, by actually projecting you into that future and causing you to imagine it. So if someone was to say to you, you know, oh, well, what if, uh, what if something terrible happened to me, you know, and then how would you feel about that? And then of course, you're going to have feelings about it. You're probably going to feel guilty. You're going to feel terrible. And so the whole interaction is designed to get you to capitulate. So this is a way of using your future pain, imagined pain against you. And it's uh, very toxic, it's very, very toxic because an emotionally healthy person, um, someone who really cared about you would never, never do this. They would never try and actually, you know, instigate a, uh, a scenario in which you would feel that much pain. You know, they would only, they would try to protect you from that. You know, they would not want you to imagine something so terrible that you would feel that much guilt and shame. Narcissists want you to imagine that. Narcissists want you to feel it. And they want to be able to control you through this. So what can we do about this, right? Well, first of all, just become aware of it. When it comes up, if it comes up for you, just become aware of it and realize that's what this is. This is an attempt to control and manipulate me. And you can also just use it as an indication as to whether you've really done enough boundary work, enough inner work to heal the trauma bond that was between you and that person and to really heal the codependent enmeshment so that you can feel very separated from that issue. So you can say to yourself, well, yes, that is a possible future, but that has nothing to do with this boundary I've given you. You know, you have to stay very clear about the fact that this boundary is this boundary and that possible future scenario is a completely separate issue. And that's, you know, that's all we can really do when we're dealing with someone that is bent on, you know, their will being done no matter what. This, this person has just a, you know, uh, an incredible need and desire to um, push their will upon you and everyone in the world. And they'll run over anyone in order to do this. So they'll, they'll steamroll right over your feelings and your needs and, you know, your experiences. And this is, this is why you created the boundary because you don't want to experience this anymore. So just remember that. Just remember that in the future, my friends. So what can you do? What can you do when you're in this, you know, kind of scenario where you're having pain is being projected onto you and, you know, you, you're, you're giving into it, you know, you're feeling the pain, you're feeling the guilt, you're feeling the shame. Well, do some tapping, calm your nervous system, um, start to release that, that anxiety and that fear that comes up around that scenario, uh, start to do that daily self care. So you can keep your brain coherent so that you can stay in a coherent state and you can stay rational and stay clear. And when you're presented with things that trigger you, there's a space that happens between the thing that triggers you and then your response to it. And then you can get in that space and you can feel safe and you can take your time and you can use your, your frontal cortex, the frontal part of your brain in order to you know, problem solve and create solutions and be creative. And instead of reacting from the amygdala, the primal brain that's responding to threat, like this is a threat and I have to fight, flight, freeze, um, or the other two, which is fawn. And then there's another one I think too as well. So just think about that. Remember there are tools, there are ways you can do your inner work, you know, every day, hopefully, even if it's just five minutes a day, so that eventually, you know, you're going to be a healed and whole person. And these kinds of things are just going to fly out of your orbit, or when they hit your orbit, they're going to bounce right off. And you're going to be impervious to these kinds of interactions with, with narcissistic personality disorders. And you're going to have energy, finally, 
for yourself. And you're going to be able to focus that energy on the things that you want to accomplish, the, the ways in which you want to, to give in this world and be a beneficial presence and to help and heal. So I hope this is helpful to you today. Please do check out the HeartShine EFT community and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Take care. Bye-bye.